Welcome back to Maths with Mrs J. We've been introducing the topic of surds and we've said that surds are irrational numbers. They're still in the real number system, but they are irrational. You cannot write a surd exactly as a decimal because as decimals, surds will be non-terminating and non-recurring. Now, to work with SIRDs, it's very algebraic. So if you've got a good handle on your algebra, you should be pretty good with your SIRDs, hopefully. You can only add or subtract like SIRDs, just like with your algebra, you can only add or subtract like terms. Let's have a look at this example here. We've got three root two plus four root two. So we've got seven root two, Minus 2 root 3 minus 5 root 3 is minus 7 root 3. So that was basically algebra that we did there, all right? We were adding up the like thirds. Again, we've got a bit of algebra happening here. We're going to expand distributive law. Now, just understanding that when we do our first multiplication here, we're going to get 2 times 3, which is 6. What is root two by root two? Well, it's two. By definition, square root two means what do you multiply by itself to give you two? So if you multiply it by itself, you get two. Then two root two um, times positive one is two root two. So we just get 12 plus two root two for that one. Now, square root of 32 is not in simplest form. How do I know that? I know that because it has a factor that is a perfect square. Let's just think for a minute about our perfect squares. Your very first perfect square is one, because that's one squared, then you've got two squared, three squared, four squared, five squared, six squared, seven squared, and so on. So you kind of need to know some numbers that are multiples of these, because that will help you. Now, 32, we can split that up into 16 by two. That's perfectly okay to do that. 32 is 16 times two. We've rigged it that way because we wanted to have a perfect square. Now, multiplication and division is very intuitive here. We can just do the square root of 16 times the square root of two. What is the square root of 16? It's just four. So this is four root two. We like to give our thirds in simplest form because, well, we like to give everything in simplest form, but also because we can only add or subtract like thirds, sometimes you might have a situation like this, for example, which we'll get up to, where you might have what look like unlike thirds, but there might actually be, once they're simplified, there might be something more you can do with them. All right, let's have a look at this one. The three just comes along for the ride. Let's just have a think about 200. What is the biggest perfect square factor of 200? Well, obviously 100 fits the bill nicely. So this is three times root 100 times root two. Square root of 100 is 10, so we get 30 root 2. Okay, this one here. The 5 and the 6 are just going to come along for the ride for now. 40. What's the biggest perfect square factor of 40? It will be 4. No, it will be... Yes, it will be 4. And then we've got our six in the bottom. Now, what are we gonna do? Five root four, root 10 on six. Now your square root four is two, isn't it? So that two will cancel with that and you're gonna be left with five root 10 on three. Okay, you can do an extra line of working there if you need to. Now this one here, We've got a couple of ways that we can proceed with ones like this. If 75 divided by nine happened to be a perfect square, I would do the division first, but it's not. 
So let's bring the square root into both numerator and denominator. Now the denominator is nice and easy because square root of nine is just three. Let's simplify root 75. Well, 75 is 25 times three. So this will be five root three. I did that extra step in my head. If you need to set it out in full, do so. By the way, let me just stress, I'm handling a lot of new work in one video. This would normally be something that would be done over several weeks of class time with lots and lots of practice. So please do lots of practice. Okay, question seven, five root two minus root eight. They're not like SIRD, so we can't do anything as is. However, let's see if perhaps we might be able to do something to simplify this square root of eight. Well, root two is already in simplest form. There's nothing we can do with that. Eight is four times two. So root eight is two root two. Because I said it was square root four by two, which is square root four by square root two, which is two root two. It's okay to do those extra steps if you need to. And then we have like says, we've got five root two minus two root two is three root two. All right, this one here, as I said before, we don't have like thirds, but let's simplify what we can. Square root five, well, five's a prime number, so it is definitely already in simplest form. 20, the highest common factor there that is a perfect square is four. So 20 is going to be two root five because it's root four times root five. Then we're going to have, well, 45 is nine times five. Root nine is three and root five is root five, obviously. Let's just tidy this up a bit. So we get two root five minus six root five plus 18 root five, which is what do we get? We get 14 root five, I believe. Yes, okay. Now multiplying, we're best in this situation because neither of these thirds can be simplified as they are. We're best to do the multiplication first. So we did two times three is six. And then we said root three by root 15 is root 45. Now we're lucky because there is a perfect square factor of 45. 45 is nine times five. So this will be three root five. So this answer will be 18 root five. And our last one for this slide, we're best in this circumstance. Well, I guess we've got a couple of options here, but I think really we're best, particularly because we've got a third in the denominator, to do our 12 divided by three is four, and root 18 divided by root three is root six. We're best leaving it like that. You could potentially simplify your root 18 to three root two, but then we're still going to have a mess and we're going to have a denominator that's irrational. We do not like leaving denominators irrational. And that brings me up to the topic of our next video, which will be rationalising denominators.